Hello everyone and welcome to another set of beginners tutorial videos. I hope this will help you guys in being able to create your own VTuber model. And this will be obviously the beginners level so we'll be running through a lot of the basics of how to make a VTuber model. Uh, I do have a series beforehand that was mostly focused on face rig but this time around this will be a focus on VTube Studio and what you can do with VTube Studio as well. We'll go and run through literally everything from beginning to end. I'm going to be showing you how I pieced apart this model for example and how you go about making expressions, very basic expressions which can also be applied to VTube Studio and how you can make those expressions work and how to set up your model from VTube Studio as well. As always, if you do like this content, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see further updates of all kinds of tutorials to do with Live 2D and VTube Studio as well. With that, let's get right into this video. So this is the VTuber model I've decided to create for the beginners tutorial. This will also be available for anyone who wants to follow a model as you're watching this tutorial. Basically, you know, it's going to be a low res file that you can use. It's a PSD file. It will have a watermark on it and everything. You're not allowed to use it for your own VTubing, I have to say. It's just there for learning purposes, just to emphasize that point. But you have the model file basically to follow along and learn how to use Live 2D using this model. So this will be widely available for all of you to use in that way. But what I'm going to do is just break down this model so that you know what the parts are, what my thinking was, the approach, and to how to layer it basically. In this PSD file we have the main rig. This is a folder and this is also Paint Tool Sci. If you're wondering what drawing software I use, I use a software called Paint Tool Sci 2. Anyone can use literally whatever drawing software you want. It could be Kriter, it could be Photoshop. It, as long as the software allows you to save to PSD format, Technically, you should be fine. I don't know for absolute certain, though, if, say, for example, you tried to save to a PSD file from Apple um, products or, you know, uh, say, iPad, for example, stuff like that. I actually really don't know. But in theory, if you save it in a PSD file format, it should work. But if it doesn't, for whatever reason, I, I really don't know, honestly. I, I would recommend putting it into another art program, possibly, and saving that as a PSD file through that art program on a normal Windows PC, possibly, and just transfer it over to Live 2D and see if it works. Honestly, it's just one of those things, one of those weird technical things that if for whatever reason it doesn't work, you, you kind of have to try and troubleshoot it as much as you can. And that would be a suggestion I would give to that. If say, for example, you're going from iPad to a normal Windows computer, it's just a thing that I want to just throw out there for anyone who's wondering about if they have any issues with that. Because in theory, anything that is a PSD file should work in Live 2D, no problem at all. But with Paint Tool Side 2, this is my main art program. I draw in it all the time. It's, it's the one I work with and it's done me well, but it's not to say that this is the art software to use. Like I say, you could use uh, Clip Studio Paint. You, you can use whatever you want as long as it saves in the PSD format. So if we were to just drop down these folders, because this here that says rig, it's a folder in Paint Tool Sci. So I'm just going to drop it down and you're going to see how I've laid things out a bit. So we have a folder also called main body and that literally has everything in it. I tend to just double up on folders like that just for organization. I like to have just a whole general folder saying rig so I know what it is. Uh, and then this is like the, the breakdown of the, the actual model itself. So I've got the main body folder and then we've got the hands. Now I'm putting the hands in there just for the fun of it but you could if you wanted to for the sake of the tutorial for simplicity you could just remove them like that. Uh, it's up to you, but I will be rigging these hands as well to move along with the body. Uh, and then we got the main body. So if we were to drop down the body folder, we have the head. And within the head folder, there is, in fact, emotions. So I've got a couple of emotions here. Uh, we got a blush here that's already active. And we got a little, little sweat drop. So that will be the two expressions I'm going to show you how to rig in Live 2D for use in VTube Studio. And we've got the eyes as well. So if you look into the eyes folder, I've got a left and right eye. And in fact, you know, it's possible we don't even need one of these eyes because I will be showing you how to actually uh, duplicate one eye and 
put it on the other side of the face in a sense so you're not having to do two identical things and if we go into one of these eye folders here you'll see there's a whole bunch of other things right so i've got an eyelid so as you see it's just basically a line and we've also got like a few other little things i wanted to add to the tutorial which was not in the previous one which was trying to add like a little bit of a movement to the eye so when the character's eye blinks it'll have just like a little bit of a bounce to it and I, I like to call it call it jelly eyes basically because it is just so kind of bouncy and very pretty but can be very silly bouncy in a sense so you know I just wanted to introduce that a little bit in this one uh, just to add just a tiny little bit of movement to the eyes which could look quite nice even if it is subtle so that'll be using physics as well so to try and break down this eye piece we've literally got this base eye bit here and then we've got the lower eye bit here as well and then we've got the highlight of the eye and then we've got the pupil and then we've got the sparkle and of course it'd be the same on the right eye too but like i say we don't need to really worry about the right eye so much as long as we have one eye completely rigged we can we, we can copy and paste the other eye and make it work and then next up we have mouth and i will be actually going a little bit more elaborate in this one uh to what it was previously in the beginner's tutorial and the overall thing that i'm wanting to do is just add a few little different things into the beginner's tutorial that's worth knowing about and in, in how in, how to rig because this is something that can also be applied to just normal advanced rigs in a sense mouth shapes are definitely the most complicated to work with but it's still a very key thing to learn no matter what along with things like the eye blinks and stuff the eye blink here is still going to be fairly simple to what is normal of more advanced rigs though but the mouth i think is still very important no matter what level to kind of get the shapes that you want and it's still a very good thing to learn i actually have a top lip and a bottom lip and it's the same layer basically exactly the same it's just one that says top lip one that says bottom lip and the idea is is that you're going to be able to mold those two lines together and uh, work with the lips in that way usually what i tend to do with models actually is give the top and bottom lip like a like a filler lip part so it's kind of like um the color of the skin basically of the character that's just above the lip and just below the, the lip if you wanted to do that that's up to you but i found that really i don't think i need to do that uh just because of the inner mouth being the same color as the lip so i just felt like that i could get away with not having an upper and bottom lip which is why i didn't do it but for argument's sake let me just demonstrate exactly how you can add a top and bottom lip so of course i've got like a, a head layer here so what I would tend to do is just get the select tool here and just draw like a little bit of a line like this and a general shape like that. With the head layer highlighted I just go on copy and then I just go paste and then I'll just put that just below the top lip so that's behind the top lip layer and I'll just name this top lip skin and then you've got yourself your top lip skin right here that you can just work with so it's like that you could clean this up a little bit if you wanted to though generally it may need more work with your own characters just because your character will have probably varied skin of different kinds of color so and shading as well uh, it's something to kind of bear in mind too i'm just going to lower the opacity so i can actually see what i'm doing here i'm just going to go ahead and just draw in like more of a shape there like that you could put the stabilizer on and just smooth it out a little bit having a little bit of leeway doesn't hurt as well And since the head itself is pure white you're not going to really notice much uh, as far as the top lip is concerned and this is really down to character design and color as well what you go for how you color it if there's a lot of shading this might be a little harder to do you could actually if you wanted it to be a little bit more seamless potentially and you're struggling with that 
you could just get a softer brush and bring like you should have a setting where it'll allow you to paint in the opacity if that makes sense so you can kind of like erase effectively the line here and just make it smoother like that and that should help with the blending of the the character as well but since i don't i don't need to do that just because it's already very blocky and i'm white so it's a very specific blocky color so i'm actually going to copy this and paste and then I'm actually going to flip this vertically and I'm going to put it down here because it's pretty much the same thing. I just think it still applies and I will be also touching on how to make your own vertices as well this time, which will make this kind of work a lot easier. In the previous videos I used automatic mesh generation and it works, don't get me wrong, it can work really well, but there's just certain parts of a visual model that I believe it's better if you just made your own vertices, one of which is the mouth, specifically. I just think that making vertices is good if you're wanting to really bend the, the parts that you have more precisely, as opposed to being limited to what the automatic mesh generator does. It's very good, don't get me wrong, and it's very good still to use it on bigger parts of your model. It would still be very time consuming to go into every single piece to make your own vertices. But there are just certain things that I think is worth really learning about. And making vertices is one of them for specifically, I'd say in this one, the mouth. Uh, so we have the top lip, that's a line, and we've got a top skin. You can't see it funny enough, but if I was to lower down the opacity of the body here and the head, which is also a separate layer, you'll see that there's some skin here, which is why I called it top lip skin. If I am to just hide all of the mouthpieces here, we can go on tongue and inner mouth, and you can see that that's generally the inner mouth and the tongue that I intend to have for the character. Yeah, you know, that's how it works really to have all these pieces in place uh, for the mouth as well. And this is where you would also add things like teeth if you want to add teeth to the character. Uh, whatever it is that you would like to add for the mouth should be added within the mouth folder. As I was saying, this is the head. Pretty standard really, like the head is just the circle here. And we also have other add-on bits really, like the, the antenna here. Within the antenna, there's one on the right and one on the left. Uh, again, it's possible that you could, if you wanted to, duplicate whatever motion you put on one side and duplicate the piece and put it on the other side. But, you know, it just depends on how elaborate of a movement it is. I'm, I more likely do stuff like that with eyes because eyes are very complex to work with. But things like antennas, you can probably get away with just animating it very quickly on the other side anyway. And that's it really for the main head part of this character. So if I was to just hide the, the layer here that says head, it contains literally everything. Everything that's basically meant to be attached to the head or meant to follow the head movement, I would put it in the head folder as it would if you were using deformers, which I will show you how that works once we get into it. Uh, we got also jelly beans. <laughs> I call them, I'm just calling them jelly beans because they kind of look like jelly beans. These parts, again, are very optional. They're kind of more accessory based, really. But what I do plan to do with these is actually teach you about physics a little bit more with that. You could call this a substitute for possibly rigging hair. Obviously, hair it flows differently as, as opposed to a bit of a bounce, but you can apply a little bit of a bounce to whatever it is that you want to do whatever pieces or whatever parts you have for your model. In this case, it's a very sort of bouncy, jelly-like sort of feel. And like I say, that could still apply to hair physics a little bit. Maybe into the future, I might make other videos that do, does kind of break down the hair a bit more. But I do technically have an advanced tutorial of using a more human uh, model. So if you wanted to check that out, feel free. As much as it does refer to face rig, and that was during the time of me using face rig, it still applies, it's still the same thing, so you know, it will work out pretty well. So yeah, th this is basically the jelly bean head I want to call it, I guess. Um, so this is basically uh, these parts here, all separated, 
And if you go into each one of these folders as well, and I just numbered them as well, I didn't really know what to call them, so I just numbered them. There's shine to them. That's really all there is to it. You, you could just as well not have the, the shine at all, and it could just be all one piece. It doesn't even have to be within a folder. Again, it just depends on like if you have added things or if you want to add, add sparkle or effects to it in any sort of way. That's when you start putting things into folders because if you want them all together in one piece, it's good to put them within a folder so that you can move it around potentially. So even though that we have a shine in here and the base here, say for example, if you didn't have this folder, you wouldn't be able to move it. You'd be separate like this and it would be a bit of a mess. But within a folder, you can move it around together like that. So it's one of the reasons why it's in folders because it just makes it easier to navigate around. So it's pretty much the same for each one of these. But, you know, if you wanted to, just for the sake of this tutorial, you could just remove them. You don't even need to uh, worry about them. It's up to you. So this is the Sparkles folder, and this will be used for a little bit of an idle animation for the Vishwa model too. So I'll be showing you how to make a, an idle animation using the breathing parameters. So they're all pieced apart so that I'm going to be using opacity to make them fade in and out at different intervals, basically. For simplicity, I am just going to be referring to the breathing parameter for idle animation. But stuff like animation, you, you can make yourself a motion-free file, something called a motion-free file that is its own idle animation, basically, its own file for idle animation that can be applied to VTube Studio within the model file settings. But I do still think there's something in breathing parameters. I still think that in terms of making idle animation, it can still work quite well. You don't have to worry about having to animate anything. It's just all kind of in a way programmed into the breathing parameter of Live 2D, where it has like this kind of set motion for breathing. Of course, it means though that you have less control though over the breathing, timing and such, because you can't edit that. But it's an option, you know, it's something that if you wanted to quickly add a little bit of sparkle in this case, you can use the breathing parameters for that, but you just can't edit the timing. That's the only thing. That's where you would have to make your own animation for it and, you know, apply it through the YouTube studio through a motion free file. But anyway, that's that's a very quick sort of explanation to that. That's the shine. That's a folder with all of the shine to do with the body. So I've separated them all off. The reason why they're separated is that I do like the idea of just giving them a little bit of stretch whenever the character is sort of pacing up and down because I do plan to give it that sort of breathing animation anyway. Or if there's a bit of bounce to the character then the the shine can have a little bit of stretch to it, a little bit of give. Again I just numbered it, I didn't really go into elaborate names here. And then if we bring the opacity up this is the main body. I've got a little shadow here just to kind of imply that the, the jelly character is kind of standing. I do have it set to an effect called Shine, which I'll show you in Live 2D that there's a bit of an equivalent to that. That There's very limited blending effects in Live 2D currently, which is Multiply, and I think another one that's called Additive. So I think Additive is kind of like Shine in Paint Tool Side 2. You know, I'll show you how to do that once we get into it, because it may look different into Live 2D. We have that, and then we've got something called Crosshatch here, which is just these little lines that I've added to the model, just to kind of give it a little bit of texture. Uh, which also has a bit of a shine effect to it as well. And then we, the rest of it is basically just the whole body. So if I was to actually remove the sparkles and the, the shine here, you can see that's what it is. It's just the base of the body right there. The, the last part is the bean back. So again, it's the same as what we saw at the beginning with the jelly bean, same, same jelly bean head. It's the same thing, but only behind the body. Alright, so I think that's everything. I think I've pretty much touched base on everything to do with this model and how it's pieced apart and hopefully this is giving you some idea as to how to piece it apart. I'm going to go ahead and throw this character into Live 2D and I'm going to start rigging it. <laughs> 